And Chess.com is here with Grandmaster Peter Fiddler, who drew on board one today, but we all want to know what was the inspiration behind the Benoni? Well, it's not exactly the Benoni. I mean, I, I try, I mean, I, I keep on trying to play the Grunfeld against Lev, and he keeps on going of three, and uh, we played, our previous two games were heavily theoretical affairs in the main line of the F3-D5, or at least what I consider to be the main line of the F3-D5 uh, variation, where... Uh, you know, play starts around move 25 in general. At least in, in, in Geneva for me, it started around move 25. And in, in, in Moscow during the Tal Memorial, it was also heavily, heavily theoretical. But you, you grow bored of this stuff. Uh, I think, you know, these days it's, it's very hard to uh, overstate just how much the feeling of ennui plays part in my opening choices. Like, I've, I've done this, I, I want to do something else. <laughs> But the problem with doing something else is that I don't know it as well, which is uh, why I got a position which I probably should not have, you know, drawn so easily today. But and uh, you're one of five Russians who knows the word ennui, so I'll let uh, E N N U E for our international uh, audience. But to, let me ask you about the game itself. He had his first long think, I believe, right before he played knight g5, and you played knight d3 yeah, pretty um, much immediately. Did you have that all, all that worked out? Well, I mean, there's no other moves after knight g5. No, Lev was, uh, uh, we spoke after the game, and he was um, heavily critical of the decision to play knight g5, probably correctly, probably rook a3, as he indicated, is a lot stronger, but. Um, he had his own reasons for going knight g5. They are probably not the best reasons in the world, to be honest. Even there, to be honest, after knight, I'm overusing that expression, am I not? Uh, after knight e6, rook a8, I felt that uh, you know my life is. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm far from being out of uh, out of the woods yet. I thought uh, bishop uh, uh, a5 was worrying me a great deal. I wasn't. It was difficult for me to choose between queen b3 and queen b5. There, both are playable, but I couldn't really figure out which one is stronger. And I was also down to like 20, 28 minutes for the remaining 20 moves, which for me these days is not, not exactly panic stations, but, uh, well, difficult. But then he went knight takes g7, I guess he just didn't like this position very much. And uh, uh, and there I even, uh, I wasn't even, uh, that wasn't Hollywooding. I mean, knight of two is an immediate draw, but I even could maybe continue with king takes g7. But after bishop d2, I felt I'm not really better. But uh, if white doesn't have bishop d2 there, you definitely prefer black in that position, which is, uh, you know, a stunning turn of events, because uh, I think somewhere around, uh, after all the captures on a five and knight e4, uh, not only was left blitzing and I didn't like my position, I also at this point had a very distinct feeling that this is exactly what my file says I shouldn't do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, not uh, not the greatest outcome of the opening, but I, I, I got away with it. And for the record, if he'd played King G1, which knight check would you have picked? Well, I did play knight d3. Okay, we, we, sorry, we the computers it, are behind. Oh, yeah, we did it once. I mean, I, I went back to d3. I, I can go anywhere, apart from h1, any, anything works. So I didn't really want to be particularly fanciful. I mean, I could, I could sort of, sort of solve the, the knight problem, like go go for, to every square once, but I mean, why, why bother? And final question, you spoke after the game, and you said he had his own reasons for playing knight g5. Did he share those reasons with you? He felt he needed to make a move at that precise moment, and uh, the decision wasn't completely figured out and he just played something I think is how he described it but uh, I'll yeah I, I was kind of expecting you to f interview him afterwards so he will he will say you know you can ask him and he will describe it or not describe it in his own words he will get his chance to get interviewed uh, but we're happy to have you today and uh, thanks for making chess exciting again and for teaching many of our uh, listeners a new word <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm here for thanks again sure.